Team Keep It Clean had to share my post-game reaction from the game that we watched between the Packers and the Baltimore Ravens, where the Packers absolutely destroyed the Ravens. 30 to 7. Now you're thinking it's a preseason game. So maybe with it being a preseason game, the score doesn't really tell the whole story. No, yeah, it, it does. It, it, it does. We sort of got a preview in joint practices earlier this week because from what we heard in that joint practice from between the Packers and the Ravens on Thursday, it sounded like, in my opinion to me, from all the reports that I was looking at, it sounded like the Packers, they were winning. And they were winning a lot. For the most part, Ravens were making their plays here and there, but it sounded like the Packers' offense was beating the Ravens' defense for the most part. And it even sounded like the Packers' defense was beating the Ravens' offense for the most part. We continue to hear about the Packers getting a lot of pressure uh, on the Baltimore Ravens' offensive line. We continue to hear about the Packers just scoring a lot of points on the Baltimore Ravens' defense. And in this game, <laughs> yeah, you, you saw a lot of that. Um... With Josh Johnson, we'll start off there. Josh Johnson, he didn't play too much, but he really didn't have to. Because in this game, he connected with Tylen Wallace on that 48-yard touchdown pass. I feel like Tylen Wallace, he ended up doing most of the work. He made Josh Johnson's job easier. Because he got open in the middle of the field. Josh Johnson hit him. Tylen Wallace caught it. But Tylen Wallace got a boatload of yak on that play. The yak that he got, the yards after the catch, was crazy. Because it looked like, after Tylen Wallace caught the ball, it looked like it was just going to be a big game, a big first down. But Tylen Wallace said no because the, the, the safety, in my opinion, looked like the safety had an angle on Tylen Wallace and he was going to be able to catch him and tackle him. But Tylen Wallace said, you, you think you about to take this touchdown from me and I don't really get that much playing time as is? Oh, no, no, no. I'm making this count. So shout out to Tylen Wallace for making yet another play in the preseason. That's something that he's been very consistent at. Over the years, Tyler Wallace has been making plays in the preseason. Now, we haven't seen him make many plays in the regular season, but that's simply because it's not because he's a bad player. It's just because he has not gotten the opportunity like that because there's been so many people in front of him. Now, at this point of the season, it's still people that are in front of him as far as the wide receiver depth chart, but I think it could go for a potential shakeup depending on how the Baltimore Ravens look at somebody like a Tez Walker. Tez Walker has been very quiet this preseason, this training camp. We hear his name very seldomly and that's not a good thing i wonder if the baltimore ravens will feel like you know what we're gonna stash him we're gonna put him away for this year come back next year come back faster stronger better uh and we'll see we'll see uh, so i i don't know what's gonna happen with that but we'll find that out in literally a couple of days um we just hadn't seen him though we just hadn't seen him too much he did make a catch today but outside we just really haven't they I, they haven't even tried him on a deep ball at all this preseason i don't recall um, and that was supposed to be his specialty. That's what he brought him in for, in my opinion. But we just we have not seen that at all. I remember when they first drafted him, I said that if the Baltimore Ravens can get 350 yards out of Tez Walker, even 400, I think that would be a great season for him. And I know some people may think, that's it? Just that many yards? No, that, that would be a good season for him. But now it seems like the way that things have been trending, will they even get that? Will they get anything out of him? Uh, it's to be determined if he is on this active roster this year. Uh, or not so we'll see um but yeah josh johnson's day was short of course uh him and tylen wallace they made a play now tylen wallace he's somebody that could continue to put pressure on deontay hardy in my opinion because tylen wallace he does a bit more because he plays more wide receiver than deontay hardy but he's also a return man um somebody else who i thought was putting pressure on deontay hardy was owen wright but now owen wright he's hurt how long he's going to be out for we'll see is to be determined um, but he's out, but he was somebody that was a running back and he was looking like he was going to be running back three, but he was also going to be a return man. So that would have been two, two spots for the price of one for the Baltimore Ravens. And you know, they like that, but now with him being out, then yeah. So we'll see what happens there, but back to the wide receivers with Tylen Wallace, with Tez Walker, his status being up in the air, um, Tylen Wallace, he's obviously going to make the roster, but Tez Walker's status could determine Dayton Wade's status, even though I don't even think it should. Dayton Wade should be here. He should be here. Uh, he's somebody that when he's out there, he makes the most of his opportunity. He looks good. He looks smooth. Again, he, he reminds me of Zay Flowers. He plays so much like Zay Flowers. And essentially, like when you really think about it, because when Zay Flowers first got drafted and I looked at him, he reminds me of Antonio Brown. He reminds me of Antonio Brown. So <laughs> that ain't a bad thing at all. Not at all. Because that's good speed, good hands, good route running, shifty, quick. That's great. So with Dayton Wade, you just never know what you can get out of him. But from what we've seen so far, things have looked good. Uh, Malik Washington. Excuse me. Yeah, Malik Washington. Um, backup, wide receiver, trick play possibly in the future. No, he had a catch in this game. And um, 
we'll see what happens with him. I I I, uh, I don't think he makes the roster right now. Um, he could possibly be a practice squad guy. He could be a tricky person for the Ravens because again, he is a backup quarterback. But let's though, switch to the backup quarterback because that's something that was a big topic of conversation in this game with Devin Leary. Devin Leary, it was a rough game for him. I think this game really like just in my opinion, it looked like it killed his confidence. Uh, he threw the two interceptions. He lost the fumble. It was just a really, really rough game for Devin Leary. And in my opinion, um, Ravens, they just continue to put him out there, though. They continue to put him out there because I really think they wanted to get an extensive look at Devin Leary just to see who he was or who he wasn't at this present time. Um, I, I do wonder how that's going to impact their final decision when it comes to him uh, on this roster or not. I wonder how they view Emory Jones because with Emory Jones, they haven't given him nearly as much playing time as a Devin Leary. But when Emory Jones has been out there, he has looked a lot more comfortable, in my opinion, than Devin Leary has to this point. Now, one thing to keep in mind, because I know us Ravens fans, we can be really tough. But with Devin Leary, we've got to remember, six-round draft pick. He's a rookie. He's not expected to come in here, be this all-star player, be this all-pro player, anything like that. There, there should be low expectations with Devin Leary. But I know us as Ravens fans still, we're watching football. We're watching the game. We want to see these players be the best that they could possibly be. So when that doesn't always happen, that we can be a little bit rough. So, but that's something I think we should keep in mind. One is preseason. One, he's a rookie. One, he's a low-drafted rookie. And the expectation should be, ex should be extremely low for Devin Leary. Um, so, but I, I just wonder how the Ravens are going to view this thing. Are they going to view it like... Because before, I was certain that even though Emory Jones looked better, in my opinion, that the Ravens are going to be like, nope, this is our draft pick. This is our guy. And this is who we're going to roll with for that third QB spot. But now, especially after this game, because it was like... It was really, really rough, man. Even Christian Welch, former Baltimore Raven, he got a pick on Devin Leary. But I wonder after this game if the Ravens are going to be like, you know what? No, I, we don't think that this is going to work out. If they are willing to move on or if they end up putting him, releasing him, letting him clear waivers, and then putting him on the practice squad. And whether they have Emory Jones as QB3 or they look for a veteran. So I just wonder what they're going to do at that backup QB position now. That's something that I know a lot of people have been like, man, y'all Ravens fans, y'all tripping over the backup quarterback position. Why y'all worrying about it so much? And hopefully we don't even want to have to worry about it because Lamar will be straight. He'll be healthy. He'll be good to go. Um, but we still would like to have something back there at backup QB where you're safe. But it's, it's going to be Josh Johnson. He's going to be QB two. Uh, and as far as QB three is to be determined. And again, we'll, we'll find that out this week. We'll find it out this week. Ravens are going to have to do some roster gymnastics because – uh, with the rosters, you can only have you can only designate two people to clear through to be on injured reserve, but that where they can return to the active roster uh, during the season. But you can put them on injured reserve before the season starts. You have two spots where you can do that too, and that's big because before you couldn't do that with anybody, but now you can do it with two players. So Arthur Millet, that'll be one of them. The other one. Will it be Keaton Mitchell or what? Well, he's probably on a physically unable to perform this because he hasn't been able to take a physical yet. Um, so I guess we'll see. We'll see it because Ravens, they, they're going to have to do some flipping, some turning and go through some loopholes to make this roster. Nate Wiggins, he was out there for a little bit. I think maybe like a little over a quarter came out the game healthy. Um, but I was like, okay, cool. Whatever. He still looked, looked the part. Uh, Jalen Armand Davis, same thing. Still looked the part. Still looked comfortable. Good depth. Pepe Williams, not his best game today from Pepe Williams. Um, it was a rough one. And then, uh, Kadir Holman, who I believe used to play for the Packers a little bit ago. He ended up giving up one of the Packers touchdowns today. Um, another one of those Packers touchdowns came on, I believe, when Devin Leary, where he snapped the ball, he was in shotgun, he faked it to, um, <coughs> faked it to the running back, and then just got whacked. The ball went flying up in the air. Packers scoop and score. But, yeah, again, back to Devin Leary. He's just a confidence killer for him. This was not – Good game for him. Uh, Kalia, the running back. Um, he looks solid as a running back. Uh, he looks solid as a return man. I, I just think Owen Wright, though, man, this was this really sucks for Owen Wright because he just, that guy, he was making that roster as RB3 over Rasheen Ali, in my opinion. But with the injury now being out, that just messed up his chances, like, uh, all the way. It's very, very unfortunate. Ravens had a couple of injuries in this game. Again, we talked about Nick Samak. I know, um, oh, not Rigby. Oh, I forget the name. There were two more guys that got injured, too. I guess we'll look for updates on that.
sorry, got cut off because the camera died. I think we were talking about Kadir Holman, I believe, and how he got scored on in this game, uh, but how he used to play for the Packers some time ago. Uh, but anyway, um, it was like a, a Ravens-Packers reunion almost. We talked about Christian Welch earlier. Uh, also, Nathaniel McCrary, Nate McCrary, who was a running back for the Baltimore Ravens, uh, a preseason hero a couple years ago. He even plays for the Green Bay Packers. Now, and on his first or second carry, he started breaking. I said, okay, there he goes. But I didn't want to chip for him too hard. But anyway, um, with the secondary, the two safeties, Sanusi Kane, he was suiting up again, so it was nice to see him out there, and Bo Bray. Boy, them two, boy, they just... I, I love how they're making the Baltimore Ravens have to make tough decisions in the secondary. Those two, they they just look good, man. I remember so many um, University of Maryland fans being hyped about Bo Bray when the Baltimore Ravens first signed him. And I remember thinking like, all right, he, he, look, he looks solid out there in Maryland and whatnot, but... With this Ravens roster, where is he going to fit in? It's going to be tough for him to make the team. And it still is going to be tough for him to make the team. But he has looked good. He, I remember there was one play where he, um, he didn't blitz, but it was a running play. I think they, the, the, the Packers tossed it to whoever their running back was. And Bo Bray shot, took them legs out, nice tackle. Was it for a loss? It was either for a loss or no game. But all throughout, though, he's looked good, man. He's looked very, very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. And for an undrafted rookie free agent to look as comfortable as Bo Braid has looked, that's a beautiful thing. For Sanusi Kane, it's the same way when they drafted, when they drafted him, I was thinking like, ooh, how's, where's his role going to be on this team? And it's still going to be tough, but he's looked good too. And again, that too, I think somebody during our live stream, somebody said that Sanusi Kane reminds them of Deshaun Elliott. Now we know Deshaun Elliott, hitter, just ready to knock somebody out quick. That's the same way with Sanusi Kane. <laughs> hey, man, they, they, they got something, man. So whether Sanusi Kane and Bo Braid are playing for the Baltimore Ravens this year or if it unfortunately doesn't work out for whatever reason, the only reason I can see it not working out for them is because it's a numbers game. That is the only way I see it not working out for them with the Baltimore Ravens. I don't think it would be one of them things where they wouldn't want to keep them, but simply because it's a numbers game and you can only keep so many safeties. Now, I wonder... Because with how, well, but he is a veteran, though, you know, it's, it's going to be tricky, but Daryl Worley, like, Daryl Worley has played a lot, and I feel like Sanusi Kane and Bo Braid have stood out more than a Daryl Worley, but let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but I wonder if, mm, nah, Ravens wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Because Sanusi Kane was a late draft pick this year, Bo Braid undrafted. Would they go with one of those guys over Daryl Worley? Uh, probably not. Probably not, because Daryl Worley already shown he could play in the NFL. He already shown he could play special teams. He could play defense. He could do all that good stuff for you. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, now, something that I, I did see uh, also this game, something that we've I, I actually seen all preseason long that has been a little concerning, but at the same time, when you think about the context, it is backups, it's preseason and whatnot. So, I ain't tripping too much right now. If it happened in the regular season, they'd be like, ooh, but it's the run defense. Run defense has been very, very ugly uh, in the preseason. We've been seeing every single game, guys can just gash in the Ravens up the middle uh, all game long. Um, and we saw that this game. I think last week was the worst. Uh, well, actually, week one was really bad, too. But I, I guess every, every week has had its bad moments. But I ain't going to trip over it now. Like I said before, too, especially with Zach Orr. Cause I, I did see some Ravens fans be like, oh, I miss Mike McDonald already. We need Mike McDonald back. Da, da, da. Give Zach Orr a shot. Give him a chance because he deserves his shot. Don't give him one week. Don't even give him two weeks. Don't give him three. Give him, give him about six weeks. Give him six or seven weeks to really determine how you really feel about Zach Orr. Six to seven weeks, in my opinion. Because then we'll know more of his tendencies. We'll know how he adjusts. We'll know what he likes to do. We'll know that stuff a lot more after six to seven weeks. So just give it some time. But yeah, that's that. Um, for this game, this was uh, a lot of guys show to show the Baltimore Ravens. Sorry, got cut off. Camera died again. But I will say this before I get out of here. This was the, a lot of people's last opportunities to not only make the Baltimore Ravens, but possibly make other teams in the NFL. And for this game, this was a lot of people's final game that they will ever play in the NFL again, because as we know, it is a very cutthroat business so it's tough man rosters are going to go from 90 men to 53 men over the next couple of days so many guys opportunities 
to for the, to play in the NFL, their dreams will officially be over uh, over the next 48 to 72 hours. And that is a very sad, harsh reality. But that is, unfortunately, uh, the business of the NFL. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see who makes this Baltimore Ravens team. We'll see who makes the roster and something to remember. And I will remind you of it later on as we go through the week and go through the roster cuts and breakdowns and everything like that. But just because somebody initially doesn't make the roster doesn't mean they won't be back. Just because somebody makes the initial roster doesn't mean that they'll stay on. It, it's just it's a lot of different things that could happen. But we'll talk about that all throughout the week. I love y'all, Team Kimberly, and I appreciate y'all. This battery, it needs a lot of charging because it is extremely exhausted, as am I. <laughs>